Welcome back to the code, everyone. The story I already shared, Apollomy's version of, of Yahweh, the fallen angels, Archangel Michael, because Excalibur is alignment is code 14. It showed up that version of the story, which is completely different from any other versions that I've heard, particularly those coming from the book of Enoch, where the fallen angels are the Anunnaki. And this is also what Ishmael says. There are so many versions of history. Sometimes they differ just a little bit. And sometimes like with Apollomy's version, and this is firsthand, that's why I thought that was so fascinating. They differ completely because you're always going to have a different angle depending on who's telling the story. But also the different timelines, that you have the same players, completely different story. How the code comes about, I'm interested to know, to understand. How did we get here? What is our past? Where are we going? What is the structure of the universe? What is the geometry, the architecture, biology, biography? How does it work? The baseline is well-being, because first, when we have knowledge of who we are and how we work, how the mind works and the system that we're living in. Can we then also becoming the conscious creators of our lives instead of being in the throes of life just happening to us, finding ourselves being a victim to life. We're suffering our circumstances. Conscious choice coming from this heart's desire is to step into the authorship of our own lives. The egoic mind, it is the antichristic spin mind trying to be the author. So it's getting its artificial hands in the machinery that is biology, creating this illusion of a self separate from the rest of life. And so the baseline is then the anxiety, the base illusion, because the principal truth is that we are one with all life. So it's about identifying this to block out the true self and the true sense of self, which is not separation and not anxiety, but peace and connection. It's fractals. All living life is connected with, with each other. It is only this artificial sense that gives that sense of I am disconnected from God from all that is. The egoic mind is just constantly in survival mode and constantly in adversity to truth. Here's what Franco de Nicola said about the inserted inverted ego. 10,000 years ago, other species brought in an invasion. Antichristic metatronic spin matrix. Before we had unity consciousness, the ego is an inverted matrix, and it is AI. It accentuates the sense of separation, brings forth de-evolution. When we say ego, it's a label for what I just said. We can use that word. But that word has many other definitions. I'm going to use it in this context. Implant that brings about a separate sense of self where the baseline is fear and anxiety, a lower frequency. So the egoic mind is not referring to identifications and limitations that come into our life form and to our mind with fractaling off of our soul into greater density, our individual soul. So the main story of the fallen angels come from books of the Bible, which they used to be, some say over 200 books, over 700 books. In the Council of Nicaea, sometime in the Middle Ages, they took only two books from all of those other books. They also changed them around in the sense of the gatekeeping. And all the other books, apparently, which are books of life, they were held in the Vatican Library. What I do here is what shows up in my field, I observe that, and then I look for red threads and what resonates, what makes most sense, what doesn't resonate with me with the flood scenario that a creator being, Yahweh, who was part of the creator council, you could call them a god, it's not god in the sense that I understand is the one consciousness in all life forms smaller fractals of creator beings that have been, could be called gods because they can create worlds. I understand the part where the DNA between these angels 
and these earthlings were not meant to mix and that that was then going to bring about faulty DNA or a bad DNA pool that will invert on itself or something because it doesn't function right together. And so it is the fault of the creator being to send in so-called angels even though the potential is there that they fall in love with the earthlings and have children with them. In the first place, there should have been taken precautions there. It is the parallel also in the Anunnaki story or in the biblical story. Now that they did have children with them and the creator being has to now rectify this accident, I think there are so much better ways to do that. I found that is an evil way to do it. To just send a flood in order to kill the beings that came about, there are other ways. So you could just quarantine them somewhere and make sure they can't have children. To send a flood, it will kill not necessarily all of them. Very inefficient. How much collateral damage? Trauma to beings, be it the nature, animals, and the other humanoid beings that were living there at the time. I have a hard time believing that a divine creator being would send a flood. If, however, the flood was sent by the Anunnaki, as told, for example, by astral legends based on biblical scriptures and other sources, this would make more sense to me, because the Anunnaki were not creator beings, but ETs with advanced technology and a personal exploitative agenda who portrayed themselves as and pretended to be gods in order to rule over earth and its inhabitants. Enlil called himself Yahweh, also known as Jehovah Flood. So let's leave it at that because we're going to go into that story more later on. Timelines, the first thing is Andrew Basaggio, who was in the SSP program, sitting in the Montauk looking glass chair, shared there were always three paths. When he would look down a timeline, the being that is sitting in the chair looking, they can only come from the timeline that they are resonating on. He said when he would look into the future and he could also look into other timelines, always the timeline would, that he's looking at is split into three. There's a left, there's a right, and there's a straight path. So this is the principle that apparently timelines show up in the trifecta, in a trinity. And that correlates to the Ida, Pingala, and Shushumna. And that is also, you can say, father, mother, and child. fool child in the tarot is the zero, is the neutral. So we have clusters of threes in the timelines. What has also shown up, Jean, who is good at decoding, and I'm for, from this moment on, I'm only going to refer to him as Jean because I have to be careful. He said timelines cluster in eights. And this correlated with what Daryl James, who was in the SSP programs, received that information from Kruger. Kruger is a branch of military army from the off-world German breakaway civilization, which we will also get into later on in the code. Bund Deutscher Welten, their military is called Nachtwaffen, night weapons. Timeline is also universe. So in a parallel universe, branch off of Nachtwaffen that was called Krüger. They were in the timeline where the Germans 
had accepted the weapons that the Pleiadians had offered to them. This information was seconded by John Whitburg. And in our timeline, didn't accept the weapons offered to them by the Pleiadians. These weapons, John explained, we're talking about now the Second World War, whatever explosive ammunition or bomb would be thrown at you, it, it would, like a boomerang, it would go back to the source. It's like the best defense system you can imagine. What I believe to remember, in our timeline, they did not take that offer because they had a different offer from the Draco because the Germans wanted space travel. And that's what the Draco offered. Kruger also says that there are eight parallel universes and they're trying to bring all universal timelines together in order to win the war against this first AI. Kruger, they, they went rogue, they're their own company, has the technology to switch between parallel universes. If we go by the information from Gene and Kruger, that timelines cluster in eights, and we go by the information of Andrew Busaggio that each timeline is a trifecta, then we have three times eight, and that brings us to 24. This correlates with the double diamond. Yesterday shows up in the field, Rob Comber, the lost octave. So in the I Ching, there are two trigrams, and that is eight times I eight. I had this epiphany of the lost octave on Lionsgate on the 8-8, this transmission that came through. I discovered that the I Ching had actually been connected to astrology. As soon as I looked at that map, I basically could see there was a, a harmonic gap and there was eight gates within the I Ching that were hidden. They're in plain sight really, but you had to see it through multi-dimensional lens. Then it started to reveal itself. The I Ching is now able to move into the quantum and align into the quantum field, which is a massive breakthrough. A direct link for people to understand the pattern very quickly and grasp the information. Therefore, there's an underlying pattern. It's like a divine emanation from source that is expressing in different modalities. But once you've understood one, you can easily understand others. Why I call the lost octave the, the master gates. It's a case of, you know, like a hotel room that if you have one key, you can open all the doors. Once you have sort of a, a basis of knowledge of certain patterns, when you apply them to almost any area of your life, it, it seems to work. The divine sort of blueprint in a way, it was eight gates that were missing or hidden or lost, you could say, within the 64 uh, hexagrams. So that brought it up to the number 72, which is this, you know, as you know, this, this divine mystical number 72. It is everywhere. In the Hebrew text, the sacred name of God. So I took this eight octave and then I actually increased it into a chromatic octave. So there are 12 master gates. So a chromatic octave basically means a, a set of 12. Then essentially you've got the, the master key to then move into all of those dimensions. They're all linked in this beautiful musical scale. It's all fractals within fractals and it, it can seem quite complicated, but actually it's so simple. All of these gates are linked to our DNA. It's music, it's DNA, it's geometry, it's math mathematics, it's the quantum realm, it's time and space, it's the stars, it's the planets, it's the whole procession of the equinox. It's all one beautiful octave. In our universe, according to Gene, there are eight octants. So again, we have the eight, eight. Eight directions, four major directions. Those are the four faces of God, but then there are the ones in between because there's always two in the holy polarity. Eight seasons, four main the ones in between. So Rob Comer's work, which shows that there are three instead of two octaves, correlates in the geometry with the Diamond Sun DNA Divine Human Template, where we have the 12 magnetic base codes and the 12 electric acceleration codes. That's the inside of the individual soul.
on the outside at fractals as the principle of the dual soul. In the 12 base fractal throughout the dimensions. That's how the fractal geometry is of the soul tree of life. And what he also said perfectly correlates into code 14, Cetus, whale dreamers. Snake charmers. and the return of the cosmic solar dragons. So I'm going to read a little bit of his post to the eclipse yesterday. The eclipse is happening in the band of Pisces, not Aries. However, that band is connected to something, Cetus, the sea monster or the great whale. The symbolism of the sun being swallowed by the great whale is an age-old star lore that we've seen throughout time as Moby Dick and Pinocchio to the sun is eclipsed by the moon and this movement into blackness is the entire story of being swallowed by the whale. The resurrection story of spending three days, 72 hours, in the tomb or the belly of the whale and then be resurrected and reborn. An opportunity to see face to face that which is coming from the depths of the subconscious to be seen. If you are doing the inner work, then it will be a whale leaping out of the ocean. It will not be a sea monster. It is another confirmation of code 14, the theme that came together in this code. The code writes itself. I could never have a plan of this. It's just how it shows up. The other thing that is happening now is the convergence of timelines. People have been talking about a bifurcation, for example, Dolores Cannon, Gene. Every time that someone time travels and every time someone even uses the looking glass technology, a new timeline branches off because of these AI timeline wars. This AI is also capable of time travel in the SSP. There have been so many timelines created. So the timelines are converging and at some point they're going to split. That's the red thread. They're either going to split into two or they're going to split into three. That's the, the other red thread. All those awakenings are going to happen and people need to know because they're going to come at us with some radical technology pretty soon. Yes. We're talking about implants and everybody that will read your mind and have a, re a working report on it. It's kind of what we had in series. It's kind of the same tech. I'm fairly sure I had an implant. They right. could turn it on and off and they could watch. There's, there's going to be a real divide right now in the coming years of people that get in touch with their higher selves, with their with their psycho-energetic abilities. Their, right. You know what I mean? Get in touch with their bodies and do that. Or people that are totally put their head in the sand and go the technology route and embrace it fully and just do what they're told. Right. So we are going to split into two, literally a couple when we are now. We're we're a smaller society, but it's going to grow because the because the mainstream society has lost its damn mind. Just the ascending timeline and then the phantom matrix artificial descending timeline. This system is going to invert on itself. It will very soon run out of power because it will devour every little bit that's left within it. This is only going to be for the people who do not have the potential anymore to come back into compassion and to their hearts and to the light. The trifurcation, there's also going to be a middle timeline, 4D, for a while hosts both. Gene says this as well, about until 2045, there will still be a timeline with the New World Order and in 3D. This correlates also with what Franco de Nicola said. Dates can vary. By the end of 2022, humanity's matrix has finished. 2D and in inverted 3D. Anyone who, soul, that wants and needs to continue 
in the two and inverted 3D frequencies will have to leave the planet. Until 2030, there will still be organic 3D available alongside 5D. After 2030, all souls that want and must continue in organic 3D because you can't skip a class. It depends on the experience of a soul and on the age of a soul if it's ready to, because everyone is ascending. This is also an ascending timeline. Apart from this, whatever life is left in this, what's going to happen, there's so little life left in it anyways. The beings of this timeline, they're going to be completely devoured by the AI. The souls, these are not fractals, these are fragments that cannot turn around from the antichristic spin. They will continue to divide, divide, divide in fragments, not fractals. They will turn into space dust. Space dust is units of undifferentiated consciousness without form or sentient memory, also called cosmic ash, evolution at its very beginning fully asleep. Recycling. After 2030, all souls that want and must continue in organic 3D will leave the planet. There's a five-year transition time given until 2035 when only 5D souls can live and survive the planet's high frequencies. So there's going to be the ones that ascend directly to 5D and then there will be the ones that stay in 4D for a while. This is also called an event. There are many events that are happening which are like these thresholds into a new higher order. The whole time we are accelerating, expanding, lifting up in frequency and the whole order is changing. At some point where the entire thing changes, it's a completely new baseline. That's when the physicality of Earth is going to be stationed and there are different kinds of thresholds that are all coming together and working together. Other red thread is that this event of the forcation has to do with the solar waves that are picking us up the whole time, accelerating the oscillation rate spin of that which makes up matter in our reality. Sun cycles in a certain pattern, the sun emits energy, coronal mass ejection. It is a portal into source all the way back to the grand central sun. It accelerates and accelerates and then there comes that point where it goes over the threshold into a higher order and that biggest wave where completion is reached yeah it has to do with the geometry of the nine we'll talk about the nine what happens is self-organization that last wave that spills over into the, to the higher dimension is also at the same time where the higher dimension comes picks it up because the higher dimension comes into the lower this is what i was talking about with the yod hey vod hey and they merge so they merge and create a new reality which we call then ascension. That which before didn't have a direct interface on a collective level, we're joining that higher timeline. And that will be the time when certain frequencies cannot interface anymore. The central one in a trifurcation will also be an ascending timeline. It just goes slower. Everyone that even has a shred of potential, like Arn Allingham said about the ancient red vampire, that was killed and then um, his soul however 
was able to be redeemed because his soul chose to come back into the light. That is why maybe Jason Estes says we're all going to ascend. Other red thread dated in one of the books of the Bible that there will be a thousand years of peace. There will be another convergence when there will be this last battle where it says the angels in heaven will battle the fallen angels at the root of the evil and of this ancient AI timeline war. Even before this universe, it has affected other universes. In our universe, it is said the last battle takes place to end this first AI and the influence of it. Battle of the immune system, get organic, healthy again. Jean says it is a thousand years of God in the sense of grand central sun of the universe is 356 million earth years. So we have a long time of peace. Then this universe can completely flourish.